Why hello there, fine viewers of the YouTube video sharing platform, Mountbatten here, and today, this is not a Wisconsin review. I'm saying this because I've been, well, announcing in my past couple of videos that my Wisconsin review is going to be coming out the day after the update. However, we have some absolutely hellish weather coming through Texas into Louisiana, and there's a very good chance my internet simply decides to, well, cease working on Thursday. So I'm recording this replay as a backup video in case that does happen on Wednesday. So in case uh, the weather comes through and my internet's not working Wednesday and I can't get the Wisconsin review out for Thursday, here is a nice lovely Schroeder replay. Is it lovely? I actually don't know as this is a live reaction replay. Now this is Captain Mediocre here and that was my Discord and not yours in the Schroeder. He has Luchins with a secondary build on his Schroeder. So like usual with these live reaction replay videos, I have no idea what happens in the game. I'm just going to sit here and watch the replay with you guys. That's my... Wow, my popular in Discord. Time to mute that. Um, but anyway... So I'm gonna sit here and watch this, watch this, watch this with you guys if I can get that out of my mouth and uh, see what happens. So Froder is a very excellent ship. She was a dockyard ship some time ago. Unfortunately, she's no longer available to purchase in the game because, well, she was a dockyard ship. But if you did pick her up, you have one of the best secondary cruisers in the game. And, uh, I mean, shoot, I mean, look at her secondary range, out to 12 kilometers, and if you look up and down the decks of the Schroeder here, you'll see that there are plenty of secondary guns, and they are the glorious 128mm secondaries. Those are the secondaries with the German pin ratio that can pin 32 millimeters of armor, which is the last major threshold in the game. So every single one of those guns you see on her deck can pin the common armor threshold at this tier. So that means she can chew her way through battleship extremities, most of the cruisers that she can see, except for maybe you know, some of the, you know, large cruisers like, well, you know, another Schroeder and a gear or something like that. Here's a rig at 14 kilometers away. Let's the Guns ripped. He has HG loaded. That's very interesting indeed. Um, not sure if I would rely too much on German main battery HG as the HG is rather anemic. He might swap on over to AP. However, of course, too, you know, he doesn't have battleship caliber guns on the Schroeder. Actually, I do believe they are like the Koenig's guns, but I mean, by, by tier 10 standards, what are these like 300 and yeah, 305 millimeter guns? So yeah, you don't really have uh, fantastic pins with these guns, even with the AP. So you might be stuck with HE if you do need it, especially when dealing with angled targets. So sectors are opening up on, I believe, the Asasio out there. Unfortunately, it looks like they are not going to hit. Nope, they are not. Some more HE out on the Colorado all the way out there at 17 kilometers. Uh, as far as the teams go, they look to be fairly evenly spread across the map. You got a decent amount of friendly ships over here at C. Three ships push pushing hard into B from the enemy side, and then three friendly ships over there at B and three at A as well. So fairly evenly split with the friendly team. B t I'm sorry, B team. Uh, the C flank does seem to have a slightly heavier presence for the friendly side, though. And he's still trying to dunk on that Colorado from 18 kilometers. This is a tier 9 game, so he is top tier, so he definitely has that going for him with the Schroeder. Some torpedoes out there. And looks like, man, that North Carolina is just kind of backing up behind that island right there, trying to uh, sneak away from those enemy ships pushing down into B. Gets a shot off there on the Azuma. Uh, I'm not actually sure if that's even going to have range at that distance. Do they hit? Nope. Seems like they do not. Ooh, and the Charles Martel detonates the Akatsuki. So the friendly Akatsuki dies here very quickly in the first five minutes. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice that. The uh, We lost a friendly cruiser. What cruiser did we lose already? We lost the Cataluna. Wow. Oh, by the way, for uh, you guys that haven't been here recently or haven't watched the replay here recently, uh, apparently the replay feature now swaps the points. For some reason, the enemy team's points appear on the friendly team's side and vice versa. So yeah, the enemy team right now is 392 points and the friendly team only has 268 points. So, yeah. I don't know how that suddenly glitched. It was fine for most of this update until a few weeks ago, but all right. Wichita there, 14.8 kilometers out. He gets his front guns out on him. 
does start a fire on the Wichita. See, this is when you swap over to AP and clap this Wichita's side right here, which he very well might do. All right, so he's there. He's going forward now. Still has HE loaded. He's tapping on the brakes at the moment. If he does run up, he could very well catch the Wichita, but the Asashio is also chilling there. Looks like on the other side of the Sea Caps. So you don't want to go selling to his torpedoes just yet. Uh, I believe the Asashio's torpedoes can hit the this Schroeder. Maybe, maybe not. 100% sure. I haven't played them too much, Asashio. Colorado's still down to 16k over there. Ooh, Energy Team has managed to take the B cap. Secondary is going out now on the Charles Martel. Now, one of the downsides of the Schroeder's secondaries is that, well, they do have range, but they don't really have accuracy because you can't take the skill like the Battleship Commanders can that improves the accuracy as your secondaries fire. So if you don't have a very high rate of accuracy just by being blessed by Wargaming and them making your secondaries accurate by default, you're not going to really get much more accuracy out of them besides, you know, putting the modules on. But the Shorters do does have, an, you know, like we said, a ridiculous number of secondaries, so she makes it for that through volume of fire. And the Charles Martel is going to be finding that out here in a second. Okay, so watching the size, waiting for that Asashio to pop up. Looks like he was briefly spotted over in the B-cap, so he knows that's where he's at. Charles Martel is in experiencing the German shower at this moment. Well, there's a root print from 14 kilometers away. Looks like he's still focusing on that Colorado, though. I mean, that's good. You want to focus down definitely one ship at a time if you can help it. But looks like the Colorado is going to slink away behind that island. Any team lost another ship there with the Takahashi going down to the Ruprik Sagley. So the friendly team is down by four ships already to the enemy's one single ship that they have managed to kill so far. So the enemy team at this moment is up by o over double the points already before the... 12 minute mark even gets here that this is not looking good for the friendly team all right mediocre is spotted at this moment but not being targeted you can see he does have the safety circle there is being targeted now that's a pretty good indication of who's looking at you charles martel or the wichita probably the colorado nope there's the martel's gun and he does pop his injured boost going to try and get around this island yep and find that martel he does have ap loaded now very good my child Unfortunately, though, the Martel, being a, quite a slippery ship, does hurt. Oh my god, they lost another ship already with the Iowa going down to the Kansas. Good lord. So anyway, uh, the Martel does pop, around, uh, pop out around the corner, but does manage to maneuver out of the way of mediocre shells. But his secondaries are freely and firmly on the case at the moment. Gets his front turrets out on the Martel again. Knocks out a torpedo tube. That's good. Um, oh my god, the Talon goes down now, too. The... The friendly team has lost half of their ships already before the 10 minute mark. And Mediocre is on fire in two places at once, which is very unfortunate because the Proto, as you can see, does have the longer burn time. He's trying to chase down this Martel and finish him off. Uh, the Colorado, I think, was lobbing some shells over here at him. <laughs> he breaks the other set of torpedo tubes on the Martel. That's pretty ironic. All right. Gets uh, number one, two, and three turret out on the Martel. Turret, I'm sorry, 1, 2, and 4. Turret number 3 was not in on that action just yet. And, okay, finally the friendly team sinks their second ship. The Sun Yat Shin does take out the Prince Rupert. With Charles Martel getting a little greedy here. Gets his first, second, and fourth turret out on the target again. And there you go. Citadels of Martel for 3,400 HP. Now his secondaries are free to focus on the Wichita. His heel is coming up here in 4 seconds. If he can catch the Wichita at the perfect angle, these guns will absolutely ruin his day. Pops his heel there. He does have another fire on his ship. Gets the front turret out. Then gets the rest of the turrets out there as he is going to turn around. And now nah, those are going to miss. Yeah, missed entirely. But his secondaries are still on the case. It's pretty ridiculous that the ship as fast as Nimbles of Schroeder has these absolutely ridiculous secondaries. But I mean, hey, I am absolutely here for it. Wichita trying to turn out. Ooh. Maybe trying to get a little greedy there. Trying to finish off uh, Mediocre, but that does not work out for him. Looks like down south, the Kazak is uh, a little bit ahead of the pack. I mean, which, hey, where do you want the DDs to be? But looks like he might run to the Asashio here any second. Wish the Kazak would win that gunfight. But looks like the enemy team is retreating back to A. I mean, heck, they have two of the caps. They're up by almost 400 points here at this moment. Gets a fire on the Wichita. That's pretty ironic. 
like what you saw turning out again trying to get his front his front turrets on the friendly shoulder here and this should cost him his life oh my god he's solo okay the secondary the secondary should get him if that fire does it okay the fires does take out the wichita and at the same time ah, there you go the kazakh does take out the asashio so now the friendly team is starting to pull it back but they're still down by well over 200 points at this moment so thankfully mediocre was able to take out those two cruisers you definitely don't want I mean, and th this is kind of like, you know, the uh, Occam's Razor, right? Do I chase down and finish off these low health ships, or do I let them go and stop trying to chase them down and stop being kited by them? You know, you turn around, you get back in the action, but then you leave these two cruisers on your flanks that can cause absolute hell. So, it's kind of like, what do I do? Do I finish them off and get the points, or do I fall back? It's going to really depend upon the situation. There, they definitely knew the, the kills, and they knew the points, and he did have the ship to do it, so it did work out for him. Alright, so he said he's going straight into the cap to get the B cap. Um, they are starting to catch up in kills now. It looks like both teams... Well, there goes the Sun Yet Sin. They were even in kills, but now the enemy team has the ship advantage again, and they still again have, at this point now, an almost 300 point lead on the friendly team. So he's going straight into the B cap. This is one good thing about the Schroeder. It is incredibly fast. So if you need to get across the map as fast as you can, pop that speed boost and get going. Unfortunately, the speed boost has ran out, but he's still vibing quite well at 34 knots. You got a low, low health Kazakh trying to do the Lord's work, farming down the Riga. You have a Shores in North Carolina and another battleship. What's the last battleship left alive? The Nisenau. Gnisenau. However you say its name. Said nice now for quite some time, got shouted at and said, no, you say it, nice now. Said nice now for quite some time, and apparently, no, you say it, good nice now, or good nice now, nice now, however you say it. He's unfortunately, however, quite low at 1,405 HP. Looks like he is going to get farmed out here, yep, by the Kansas. Uh, so at least four allied ships left alive, and again, the enemy team is now at a 400 point lead just about. Gets his guns out on the Kansas at 17 kilometers away. Looks like the, what was that? North Carolina looks like he's got a pretty full bit of HP left. The Shores does as well, but it is the Shores, so it doesn't really have any armor. Does manage to get a fire on the Kansas. Maybe there's something using this HE in the uh, Schroeder's main guns. Kansas still selling fairly broadside to our friendly Schroeder. Gets his shells out on him again. Kazakh still doing the Lord's work up there, spotting for everybody, but it does look like the Z31 has caught up to him, so that's going to go very poorly for him. There's the Asturias there at 11 kilometers out. Gets his HE on his bow. Secondaries are on him as well. I, yep, there he was swapped him over to AP. Good call there. So the secondary should, I mean, should shoot the Asturias pretty good. Does get a fire starter on him. But the Asturias does have, well, essentially the Schroeder's life left in HP. Well, there's a Kansas from 12 kilometers away. That'd be a very tempting target to not shoot. Looks like he is falling for the temptation and shooting, but he very well could take him out here if he gets a really good roll. Ooh, and the Yukon! Ah, ah, ah. Yukon's not that great, but I mean, you don't want to see any battleship popping up from 8 kilometers away from you. So now he's in an absolute brawl for his life here against the Asturias, the Yukon. And the Kansas front two turrets out on the Asturias. Citadel there on the Asturias. Pops a secondary battery expert skill on Luchin. So now his secondaries have a 15% reload buff. Takes out the Asturias there with the fire. Sees the torpedoes coming in. Manages to turn out of the way. Oh man, look how look how wonderfully maneuverable the Schroeder is. It's glorious. All right, still has to deal with the Yukon though, and he uh, he's much tougher to Citadel with his guns. All right, the Shores take out the Riga, and the North Carolina does take out the Kansas. Now it is a 4v3 engagement, but the enemy team is still well ahead in terms of points. Seguers are working their way through the Yukon's armor. Ooh, no Citadels there. Unfortunately, a lot of those shells didn't go into the water before they got to the Yukon. Keeping his bow pointed toward the Yukon. The Yukon is now choosing to sell away from the Schroeder. Ooh, he is angled enough to where he's not really going to be able to pin him. As you see there, did ricochet off that main battery belt. It looks, looks like he was going for the upper armor there. Did manage to bite that a little bit and get some damage in there. He's also being targeted now by another ship, probably the Awami, if I had to guess, from the other side of the map. Looking for a place where he can bite, trying to knock out his turrets there. Ooh, those Awami shells getting uncomfortably close. Those shells look like they went into... Some of them went into the turret, and he got that 10% damage roll from the turret. But he's also looking like he's trying to get... Yeah, no, he's definitely trying to knock out the man's turrets there. Uh, can he do that? Mm, 
Mm, unfortunately, it doesn't look like he had quite enough oomph to do that. He is definitely hitting them, doing damage to them. He's also trying to outrun the turrets at this moment. But he's so close, not really sure that Yukon can really... L listen to these secondaries, fellas. Oh, that is such a satisfying sound. There he goes, shoves some shells into the superstructure of the Yukon and manages to take him out. So despite all of that, and despite the friendly team getting the enemy team down to two ships, the enemy team still is almost 100 points in the lead. So they have to make stuff happen. Z31 is down thanks to the shores. Kazakh is hanging in there by 1700 HP. Looks like someone took a pot shot at the Kazakh. Was that the Iwami? Is he going to get him from across? The that would be a hell of an impressive shot, taking a Kazakh out from that far away. All right, Mediocre is heading into the B cap to secure it. They are managing to close the gap, but I mean, heck, while the enemy team has two point, two caps up, they are going to continue to gain on the enemy team. But now that Mediocre is in the cap, he's going to stop that points gain, but they still have to take that A cap if they want to really gain on them in the time that they have left, which they might be able to. It's going to be hella close, and you definitely aren't going to be able to lose very many ships, if any. So Mediocre types in, in the chat. Cap and stay alive. Absolutely, friggin' lootly. That Awami is pretty good at range. So you definitely don't want to be spotted by it. That's a good thing. They have managed to blind the Awami. The enemy destroyer is down. So the Awami can't see anybody. So he has to come and do his own spotting. So if the friendly ships just simply live and take the speed cap, they should have enough time. Again, it's going to be close. And they can't really lose any ships. But they should catch up on points in the three minutes that they have left. And Mediocre seems to be well aware of that. So he should be getting the cap here. Going to get a solo cap river. That's a nice boost to his income. I right, see so he's taking the cap. They are now roughly 20-ish points behind. Yeah, they should have time to catch up in terms of points. Okay. Oh, Iwami is spotted. Can you see anybody, though? Hmm. If I was mediocre, I would go just straight headfirst into that island. Get that island between myself and him. Oh, smart move. Smart, smart 500 IQ move. Disabled his secondary guns because now your secondary guns, when they fire, they do extend your bloom to their firing range. Since the shoulder's uh, detection range is at 10.2 kilometers and his secondary range is at 12 kilometers, if he would have fired his secondary guns, he would have been spotted. He has 14,000 HP left and no heals. He is playing this super smart. Now, he could turn them on from here, and now that the Iwami has an island between himself and Mediocre, he wouldn't be detected if the secondary started firing right now, if, again, they had that range. But it looks like he's just going back up on this island, which is a smart move. And again, he can fire his main guns here and st still stay in concealment and help get that Iwami down, and he has to turn his secondaries back on now. Alright, does poke the Schroeder, the Schroeder, the Iwami a little bit. Gets five pins there, but again, very low damage because of the Mediocre German HE. Okay, I'm not sure if I, if I was these other ships, I would really be firing because you don't want the Iwami to see you and clap you. And that Shores, Shores doesn't have a whole lot of HP. Oh, God, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 3,800 HP left. And the enemy team is now lose, is losing in terms of points. Friendly team is winning, so this is probably how this match is going to end. Um, 880 to 850. Oh, no, Shores. Is that coming for you? Oh, no. Oh, okay, sure is stop firing, get behind an island, please. Uh, come on, tur turn hard in and get that island between yourself and the Iwami, that island at F4, F5. No, don't shoot, Shores, what are you doing? Can you see him? Can you see him? Yeah, he, he can see him. And there goes the Iwami shells. That's gotta be going to the Shores. Oh no! Ah, now the enemy team is winning with 50 seconds left on the clock. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! No 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 no! This is going to be close. Okay, so friendly team has 888 points. Enemy team has eight has 914. Ooh ooh my God! This is going to be yeah. I would be furious right now. Okay, 900 to 920, 903. 906. Uh, please tell me that like the Kazakh isn't still trying to open water gunboat him. I don't think he is. 923 to 912. Oof. 15 seconds left. 929 to 924. Oh boy. Nine seconds. 932 to 930. Oh my god. Are they gonna make it? 
935 to 936. Oh, and by one point, they win. Oh, 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 oh. That, that, that is far too close to, for comfort, my guys. So yet again, fellas, whatever you do, don't try to win harder. Don't be the guy that's trying to farm a little bit more damage off of the game and be the reason your team almost loses or barely wins by one singular point. That was a lot of work put in by the survivors on that team almost thrown away there. So yeah, don't have eyes bigger than your stomachs, fellas. So he got Dreadnought, as he should. Fireproof, as he should. And High Caliber. Oh, he was one kill away from Kraken. Look, if... Mediocre here can, you know, give up a Kraken for the sake of an assured victory. You can give up simply not dying for an assured victory, right, fellas? Uh, where do you come out in terms of his team? Number one of the team, 2300 base XP. So, excellent work there, Corporal Mediocre. So, if you have a similar replay of a close call or an exciting match, make sure to send it in to the email link down below. You might find yourself here as either a backup video for my Thursday video or the bonus Sunday video, which this video will be if everything goes well on Wednesday. So anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful whatever day this comes out. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.